California Park Fire is creating smoke thunderclouds. They're called pyrocumulonimbus clouds, and they might offer a terrifying peek at the future of wildfires, Matt Simon reports. With 600 square miles burnt so far, the Park Fire is already one of California's biggest wildfires ever and is still far from contained. Driven by strong winds, the blaze has chewed through desiccated plants, spewing smoke high into the atmosphere. So much smoke is rising and rising hot air, in fact, that is being created, uh, creating fire tornadoes and one of the strangest natural phenomena on Earth, the pyrocumulonimbus cloud, or pyro CB. It's a smoke thundercloud that makes a dangerous wildfire like the Park Fire, burning in the northern part of the state, even more unpredictable. Pyro CBs can produce lightning that goes on to spark more fires around the very blaze that made the clouds. And as the planet warms, pyro CBs seem to be growing more common since they're spewing, they're spawned by the biggest, fiercest wildfires, which themselves are getting worse. Pyro CBs are such massive, almost volcanic like eruptions, says Rijan Chirak Chakrabarti, an aerosol scientist who studies the clouds at Washington University in St. Louis. These pyro CBs create their own fire weather, he says. The park fire has grown massive on a diet of extra dry fuel. This part of California has not burned for decades. So a lot of plant life had built up and desiccated under the summer sun. Very low humidity has helped suck what little moisture remains of vegetation, turning the landscape into a pile of tinder. Such a big and intense fire is a breeding ground for pyro CBs, marvels of fire physics. And as a blaze like the park fire burns and burns more viciously thanks to climate change producing higher temperatures and drier fuels, the heat from the flames rises, propelling smoke particles tens of thousands of feet into the atmosphere. As the air rises, it cools and expands. Water then condenses on the smoke particles and the cloud forms. The masses of rising air in the pyro CB form a sort of void at ground level, which sucks in more air, generating winds that encourage the spread of the flames. The most intense of wildfires consume so much oxygen that they can somewhat smother themselves, but pyro CB winds inject more of the gas into the firestorm. It's a self-perpetuating process, said Daniel Swain, a climate scientist at UCLA and the National Center for Atmospheric Research. Because the more intense it is, the more oxygen that rushes in, which means the more intense it is, which means the more oxygen rushes in, so you can see how that goes. At the same time, a towering pyro CB can create a downdraft, making winds at the surface even more unpredictable. The convection causes a lot of chaos, so it becomes very hard to predict where air is coming from and moving to, said Peyton Beeler, an atmospheric scientist who studied pyro CBs at the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory in Richland, Washington. And that in turn leads to chaotic fire behavior as those winds push the flames across the landscape at different speeds and in different directions. The smoke from a pyro CB travels well beyond the blaze that spawned it. Some of the aerosols that get injected into the upper troposphere or lower stratosphere tend to stick around for up to six to eight months, Beeler said and they can get transported across hemispheres, basically. So where is this kind of cloud going to go to? Now, the black carbon from Pyro CB cloud is not exactly behaving itself up there, either. In a paper published last week in the journal Nature Communications, Beeler found that the black carbon from a Pyro CB absorbs up to twice as much visible sunlight as black carbon from smaller fires or from urban sources like the burning of coal. Particles in the pyro CB plume tend to have really, really thick coatings of organic, Spieler said, and that is distinct from black carbon from other sources. That increases light absorption and raises temperatures in the atmosphere. It's like a black sweater. It absorbs all the sun and warms the vicinity around it, said 
Jack Dabarty, who co-authored the paper with Beeler. Why this happens in Pyro CB clouds, though, scientists still don't fully understand. It may be that there's something distinct about the way Pyro CB spawning wildfires burn, or that there's a secondary process going on inside the cloud to coat the particles with more organics. Organics, in this case, come from the fire combustion of vegetation. Another unanswered question is whether pyro CB clouds are already more common due to climate change supercharging wildfires, or whether scientists are getting better at detecting them with satellites, or a combination of the two. Pyro CB plumes have been popping up all over the world, from Australia to Siberia, as fuels get drier and temperatures get higher. The monster blazes in Canada this summer have been breeding them too. They seem to be happening more frequently, Beeler said. Whether that's a function of warming climate and better identification, I think it's probably both. But the impacts seem to be very long-lasting and long-ranging, he said. This article is originally from The Gist by Matt Simon in San Gizmoto. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.